So, how do you check the compressor and you make sure it's not going to explode when you turn it on? Maybe it'd be useful to know. Let's find out. Alright, so real quick, I got a call back. Well, not a call back, but somebody was on call last night. So they don't know why this compressor is doing what it's doing. It's making kind of not doing good. So he's like, someone needs to figure out this compressor is okay. So we're going to go through that today. So first and foremost, I have no way of knowing. Is this compressor filled with liquid? Is it filled with oil? I don't know. For all I know, those controls could be garbage. It could have been shut down for six months and now it's filled with oil. I don't know. Another thing that makes me think that that could be is because the oil reservoir, well, it was empty before I started emptying out the compressor. So, could be that the compressor just had oil in it and he tried starting it up. But we're going to go through our paces anyway. So what I did was, I isolated the compressor. So that's really simple. I closed the, the discharge, closed that down, went over here, Close the oil, the oil equalization line and the oil. And then I also closed the suction side as well. So now what I did was I hooked up one side of my gauge to the suction. And then, you know, I have a couple videos on pushing oil out of the compressor so you can go and look at them. But one side hooked up to the suction, the other side hooked up to a liquid, or you could use a discharge. The discharge flows into my gauges through my gauges into the back of the compressor and now on the front I'm hooking up to the oil line if there is one oh, getting a little drooly I'll tighten that up a little bit but the oil is being pumped out of there and it's going over there and it's going into this liquid header over here now it might have been better actually if I put the oil Pump it in over here or over there. I should have probably done that so it doesn't just trickle down to this compressor. But anyway, it is what it is now. Also, you gotta put a straighter core removal tool right there as well to get this going in. But anyway, so we're getting that going. So we're gonna pump out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pump out all the oil until that oil reservoir is at least halfway or um, you know, or more reasonable. So while that's going, we're gonna take off the head of the compressor and we're gonna look in there and we're gonna ohm it out. And I'll teach you how to do that. It's not rocket science, it's not too hard, okay? Look around this thing, it's going over here. So. Come back here, so we're gonna go into this electrical box right there. So I gotta take this off right now. Also, just verify that it is in fact your breakers off and your control voltage is off as well. Don't wanna get no arky sparky or explosion. So you can see it's now off. I'm gonna test some voltage because even though everything's off, always verify it's not worth your life. Try to see if I can record it this way. So as you can see, I'm going to touch it to the ground. Now I'm just making sure that there's no voltage in here. So touch everything to ground as well. Right. So not want to get no arky sparky. So now we're going to ohm it out. So you're going to change your gauge to ohms. Okay, and we're going to see what the resistance is between these two. So we have continuity. We have continuity. And we have continuity. That's what we want to see. We want to see, you know, one to three ohms between everything. Or at least if there's a connection. Now I'm going to touch it to ground now. Now we're going to see if it's grounded. Because if we had continuity to ground, that means if, if we were touching this ground over here and it was saying, you know, zero or one, 
This means that this compressor would be grounded out, which means that it's electronically junk. Okay? So the first test is that we were making sure all the windings were still connected to one another within reason. So if you got an ohm reading of like 500 ohms, 1,000 ohms, you know, or an open line, which is OL, that means your compressor is burned out or starting to burn out. Now, if I got, when I touched it to ground, now it can be any ground. You can even touch it to like this metal cabinet right there. And if you get zero or like one ohm or some type of continuity to ground, then that means that the windings in the compressor are touching the side of the compressor and they're feeding electricity into the compressor which is making its way to the ground. It's grounded out. So that is also no good. If you find either of those two things, shut it down. Your compressor is no good electrically. You got to get a new one. There's nothing you can do. But at this point, it has passed that test. So now, all we got to do is I need to wait for that oil to get down to a reasonable level and then we can turn it on, put it through its paces and make sure it's pulling proper amperage. So while that's pumping out, we're gonna take a look at this tag information here. This is located on the back of the compressor, as you can see. So and we're in the Copeland mobile app currently. And what you can do is you can just physically type it in that's what I'm doing right now, so we're just going to type this in, A3-2000, dash, TSK, right there, and put that in there, and sometimes there's another three numbers, but they don't seem to matter, right? So now what are we looking for? Well, unfortunately our rack has been converted way back when to 404A, but we're just going to have to use these values and guesstimate because there's no 404A here for this compressor because it's so old from a time period where I'm guessing they didn't have it. So application medium temperature 460, pretty sure it's 460, we're going to double check that of course at the breaker, but we're going to go here R22, we're going to go to electrical. So now that we're in electrical data, we go under summary and we can see our MCC. This is one thing I care about. Maximum constant current is 46. Okay? 46 amps. So now from here, we're also going to go to performance. We're going to look at rated performance and we're going to see that at a... Where's the EVAP coil? EVAP coil of 20 degrees, we're going to get 45 amps, and then the EVAP coil of zero will get us 35. ET app, and I want to take a quick look and see how much pressure that is. So at 43 pressure, at R22, okay, that's going to be about where we're going to sit. You know, if our if our pressure range is around there, we're going to be looking at around 45 psi, and if our pressure is down to that 24, we're going to be looking at 38 psi. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on over to this 44A, and I'm going to put in what is 42 psi saturation temperature. Now, 48 is the current pressure that is set in our Danfoss controller right there. So I put it in and I'm getting around a 15 degree coil. So I'm going to expect this thing to be about, unfortunately, you know, I don't know how dense 404A refrigerant is compared to R22. And I don't know, you know, the, the difference between the two because like very well it could be like the difference between pumping water and maple syrup but I know what the maximum amp capacity is and I have an idea 
that more than likely, so the maximum, if we remember right, I believe was 46, right? And we have that our capacity. So I'm gonna be looking for this thing at, at 48 PSI to be between 38 and 46. And we're gonna hope for that and we're gonna see how it goes. Now just to show you over here, you can see the set point, 48 right there. And I'm gonna come down here and I find that there's no better way to actually check the voltage other than physically checking it at the actual breaker. So I'm gonna check it up there, those little holes. So you can see we got 485 volts. So yep, yeah, so currently the oil is out of it. So we're gonna unhook everything. We're gonna open up the discharge and the oil and I'm gonna partially open up um, the suction because I don't want the oil to rush into it all over again because unfortunately that was an error on my part putting that there. I should have put it over there and let the other compressors gobble it up and put it into the system. Um, it still would have got to some of the other ones because it's spraying in as this oil vapor mixture. And you can see that this is filled up so, but we're gonna try to stage it on and see what happens. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to down to the little pad. We're gonna go to that little suction group right there. We're going over to service, okay. We'll go down here and what we're just gonna do is we got compressor one, actually compressor four, manual off. We're gonna go service supervisor. Well, I can't show you any of that. That's my password and stuff, I almost did. And we're gonna turn it manual on. Okay, so now everything's open. We're gonna flip this back up. Now everything's open. So it's, that's open. The discharge, the oil, and the suction. It's all open, good to go. Starting to fill up with oil. So we're gonna turn it on and see what happens. And just be careful and kind of take a look. Okay, so it ended up happening where that breaker just took it off. So we're gonna turn it on again. And I want to see if I can see the amperage quick. So you can see it's not drawing any amps. Oh, right there. That was like a hundred and something amps. So that's pretty wild. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get the compressor a minute. Because what I think it's doing is I think it's going off on overload. So I turned off the breaker again. I'm going to pull make sure that all these connections are good. I probably should have done that to begin with. Now, we're gonna take continuity across this contactor here because in reality, if the contact is no good, what it could be doing is it could be only supplying voltage to um, one uh, one. So you can see that contactor is pretty old and pitted. Um, we're gonna take a look and see what the continuity is across it. So you can see got an open line right there. We're gonna look and take a look, see. All right, so we got all. What we're gonna do is so we got zero, that's good. Look at that. Yeah. Open line right there. So this contact is no good. We're gonna replace this contactor and then see how it goes. In retrospect, I definitely should have checked the contactor first uh, before I turned it on. So just a note, definitely check it before you do that. I forgot to. Um, so it needs a 60 amp contactor, 240 volt coil, 208 volt coil. So we're gonna go get one out of the truck, put it in, and then we're gonna check amp draw. And because now, this has been basically single phasing for who knows how long. So it's it's very possible that compressor could still be junk. Just some quick advice for you. Definitely keep a big boy contact on your truck. 
at all times in commercial refrigeration, at least in my opinion. Um, having this big boy will, like, you know, two in the morning, because you can always go up with a contactor. You can, if you got a 30, you know, run load amp contactor, you can replace it with an 80 in a jam, you know, an 80. Like, it, overkill is fine. Underkill is not. So, I always have a big boy on my truck. Also, we can take this walk to kind of go through, you know, a flaw in my technique today, you know, and I made an assumption that the contactor was fine. Shouldn't have made that assumption. Unfortunately, the store that we service isn't super big on PMs, so, you know, sometimes you kind of take things for granted that might work, and I should always stop at the beginning of the chain, so, anyway, I'm learning too, just some dude on the internet, but still gonna post the video I think because I think it's still worth seeing so you can see now I put in the new one now you can definitely see that even one side of it was welded technically kind of it was just it was just really messed up in there it wasn't good at all anyway so this is in there so I'm just gonna pull on these verify they're in tight now they're in tight now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that on up there And I'm going to check across it again, just to make sure I got a good connection. And obviously, you know, where your proper PPE and all that. So you can see it's fine. So I'm just gonna check it on every single one. I don't, and I mean, it's brand new. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem, but just in case, just wanna make sure, you know. And now there's still a possibility that the compressor isn't good because remember, it's been doing this single phasing for a bit. So hopefully the overload relay inside the protect inside the compressor protected it. But we're gonna we're gonna take a look. So we're gonna flip it on. Be you know patient. Wait for it to click on. It takes some amp draws. You can see that it's now running just fine. Take an amperage, 25, 24, 21. So that is well within the amperage range of operation. So while that's running, I'm gonna come over here. Warm suction. Sorry, discharge. Hot discharge. Not warm. Warm suction would be bad. And I can feel the suction getting cold. So, seems like it's doing all right here. Contactor was the issue. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully you learned something. Uh, we pushed the oil out, we checked the amp draw, we owned it out, we, you know, we, we put through our paces. The compressor seems fine now, just need a new contactor. So anyway, as always, please like, subscribe, and all that. And if you have any information below, even just, this is how I could be safer. This is how I could do it more efficiently. Something that some new guy would read, or, or myself, and go, wow, that's pretty neat, and I'm going to learn a thing or two about a thing or two. Please post it below. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I helped you. Have a good one, and that's how you do it.